Hi, everyone. I'm just waiting uh, for a couple other participants before we get started. Um, hope everyone is doing okay today. This is my third Zoom session. Um, learning a lot of new skills <laughs> in the technology department, that's for sure. Uh, I find it a little odd that I'm speaking to my computer and I'm not able to see anyone. Uh, but I do know that there are <laughs> nine of us currently um, keeping socially connected. Uh, so again, thank you for joining this, this webinar. Uh, my name is Jenny Lee Almeida. I'm a mental health educator uh, at Windsor Essex um, CMHA. Again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, today, we really wanted to just talk about how we all um, can just review and go over some of those best practices in terms of what they're telling us um, are some great strategies that can definitely help us uh, manage, you know, this uncertain time that we're, we're in right now. Uh, we're all experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of fears, worries. Um, so, you know, we're all in this together. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get started and go through. I'm just checking to see it's three o'clock. So uh, for purposes, I will move along. So then that way we can all um, finish up right away. I will try to um, have the webinar around 45 minutes so that that way we can definitely have a uh, Q&A. Um, I hopeful that I can try my best to answer any any questions after the webinar I will have a um, an email sent out uh, to your email in which you registered with a link to any resources and some of those websites that I'll be speaking about today okay so I'm gonna start it so how can we manage uh, currently how are we able to manage this stress? So I'd really like off to just, you know, it's absolutely normal that we're all experiencing some sort of stress, fear, worry, anxiety. Uh, I'm not really concerned about what I'm labeling it. This is uh, a lot of new emotions that maybe we might be experiencing right now. I think what's really important to, to, to really identify and, you know, just don't, avoid, ignore, or try to suppress any of these strong emotions that you might be currently experiencing right now. Um, be aware of those stressors or if you've noticed an increase in, you know, that fight, flight, freeze response and, you know, you're starting to notice instances where you're not able to concentrate or your sleep has been majorly impacted. Um, us again just not being able to you know socialize and have that face-to-face -face physical contact has also impacted how um, we're dealing with this unprecedented um, you know this pandemic that we're experiencing right now uh, a lot of new normal this is you know this is the time where we're trying to adjust uh, so you know it's really it's good to keep things in perspective you know, notice and challenge those thoughts that you might find unhelpful or they might find, you might find them uh, extreme. And a good example that I always like to talk about in regards to well, what are unhelpful or extreme uh, thoughts, uh, sometimes worrying, right? We're worrying a lot about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen a week from now, you know, how do we plan for everything? Am I going to be working from home for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, especially even when we start to think about our children, you know, will they be going back to school? When are they going? So a lot of our anxiety and stress might start to come into play when we start focusing on, you know, what's ahead of us, you know, worrying about the future, worrying about things that we honestly, at this moment in time, we don't have these answers for this. Um, so the first step is don't avoid those feelings. It's absolutely okay, which 
whatever way um, you are trying and you're currently expressing these emotions, how it's coming out, validate those feelings. It's absolutely okay to be crying or to be experiencing an increase in stress or sleep difficulties or not being able to concentrate while working from home or feeling stressed. I mean, I could go on and on. Try to keep things into perspective. Don't be hard on yourself. Um, and it's okay to just feel some of that stress. Sometimes the best we can do is name that emotion, you know, accept it. And uh, sometimes I just tell myself, you know, taking a deep breath in and saying, okay, you know, it's okay that I'm feeling this way. It's understandable. And now I'm going to acknowledge it and try to move on. Um, so we're going to get through a little bit more in terms of what are some other ideas. So I uh, listed here uh, something really important is, you know, to be kind to yourself. It's very important for all of us, um, you know, to right now accept that some anxiety and fear and worry is normal. I don't even like the word normal <laughs> because what's normal for me is going to be totally different for someone else and someone else and so forth. Um, I always like to tell people, get to know yourself. What is your normal? And when you're starting to notice any, you know, fluctuations in terms of mood or how you're responding to stress or fear, worrying, you know, and if it's starting to get to the point where you're like, oh, this is more than usual, it's okay. Accept that this is an unprecedented time. You're experiencing a pandemic. Um, we're all in this together, but at the same time, it's very scary. It's very you know, overwhelming. Um, and, you know, check in with yourself. You're doing the best you can in a time when simply turning on the news, right? Right now, we're all in listening to this webinar. I hope no one else is doing anything other than just listening or watching this webinar. And for me, I'm grateful of 60 minutes where I get to focus on just connecting with all of you via Zoom instead of thinking, oh, what's on the news? You know, so sometimes it's tuning in and tuning out to certain things and knowing it's okay to take a break from listening to everything that's going on in the news because it absolutely is going to make us feel a little overwhelmed or a lot overwhelmed or somewhere in the middle. I'm noticing a, a lag, I apologize. I'm just trying to click to my next slide. Okay, so what you might be seeing right now is just a picture that I've been looking at every day. I like to kind of look through some positive images, positive quotes, anything that can help me make sense or just kind of you know, take one day at a time. So again, in our situation, we really want to focus on manage managing what we can and releasing what we cannot. So sometimes when we start focusing on a lot of worrying thoughts or what if thoughts in the future, we, we notice that definitely increases our stress or our fear or anxiety. Um, and when we're able to manage things around us and what we know we can manage, um, it, it helps us feel a little bit more in control. Um, I also like to I also like to point out that you know us human beings we're extremely resilient and a time uh, like this when we are faced with a lot of uncertainty a lot of stress um, I always like to go through instances where you know I have been extremely stressed and how have I gotten through that um, are there any tools that I can look back on and bring and pull from and utilize it right now. Uh, so we all have a set of coping. We also have, we all have a little toolbox. I like to say, you know, at any point in time, continue adding things into your toolbox, coping strategies, maybe inspirational quotes that you like, something a friend has said. You know, it never changes, right? Our resiliency constantly grows. We can learn new strategies uh, for wellness all the time. So. You know, right now we're able to manage what we can and we can try our best to release things that we cannot. 
sometimes obviously that's easier said than done. Okay, so our next step, number two is take action. Uh, a great way to reduce, minimize that stress, that fear that worrying, it, worrying causes is taking reasonable action um, to get us feeling like we're back in control and reducing that anxiety. So what does that mean? It just means getting to know those, those good information about COVID-19, understanding actual risks to yourself, to your loved ones, the people that you care about. Um, so you can make this feel a little bit less stressful dependent on your situation. Also, something really important to, to keep in mind, and I can't stress this enough, really try to seek out information from reliable news sources only. Um, technology is proving to be the most wonderful thing for all of us right now in terms of keeping that social connection um, and keeping connected. But it's very easy to start scrolling through Instagram, Twitter, or on Facebook and clicking on links. And, you know, we start to get bombarded with sources or information. We really want to ensure that we are seeking that information from those news sources that are going to provide us um, information that can help us. So I've listed four websites right there, the World Health Organization, Health Canada, the Ontario Ministry of Health, and um, here in Windsor, Essex County, it would be our Windsor, Essex County Health Unit or your public health unit. And I really say this, um, and I can't stress it enough, you know, when we start clicking links and we start reading, um, it, you know, one little thing can kind of turn into something where we start to believe, oh my goodness, this is what's going on, when in fact it might be the complete opposite. Um, so check in with maybe one of those websites at least once a day, um, mute <laughs> um, websites or links or you know individuals that you might notice are constantly posting a lot about uh, COVID-19 uh, and sharing different links from websites. Number three, staying connected with family, friends, colleagues. So human beings, we need to feel and be connected. And, you know, right now we have all been, you know, feeling this. It, I remember March 16th for me stands out. That's when I started to uh, work from home, uh, you know, and we've really needed to pull right now in terms of, being creative and again, this is my third time on Zoom. Hopefully you're hearing me and hopefully you're seeing a PowerPoint and not my face. Hopefully my face is just a very tiny little window. I believe the first time I did the webinar, apparently I did not show the PowerPoint whatsoever. So I'm learning. Um, but we need to feel and we need to feel and be connected. So how do we stay connected with our family and friends? Uh, whether we're, you know, working from home, we're socially isolating, um, we are in quarantine, uh, you know, we're trying our best to uh, really adhere to what the health unit, what Government of Canada is telling us to do. And for those of you that, you know, are living alone, or you're living uh, alone and you're thinking, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting to connect with my friends, my colleagues, my family. You know, it's maintaining our social connection is actually crucial, crucial. So, well, this is where we get to be creative. You know, maybe instead of texting, it's calling someone. You know, starting Facebook uh, little groups uh, where you can chat, Google Hangouts, WhatsApp to connect visually, um, you know, FaceTime, Zoom. And again, something else that's really important is when we also feel connected to our community and we know where to access for resources and supports, we also feel that connection as well. So map out important resources ranging from daily necessities to emergency management. Um, so, you know, our mental health resources. I know a lot has changed everywhere, specifically, you know, every single um, county, city. It does not matter where you live. I know a lot of how we are now conducting day-to-day -day business. You know, I, I know 
it's changing a lot. So map out those resources that you utilized before and you know what are the differences? How can you connect to those resources now? That also helps us feel connected within our community to our organizations and so forth. So we should again all remember that this is really an important time that we can lean on each other. You know, even though we can't be physically co close, we're still able to stay close emotionally. Um, as I mentioned earlier, self-care self is critically important right now because um, we know that our stress and our worries and our fears have increased. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, right, um, we know that that is going to our worries, our stress, our anxiety, it's going to feel when exa feel exacerbated or made worse. So we really have to now more than ever lean in on our social supports, um, trying to get enough sleep, trying to eat healthy, be active a little bit, and try our best to en engage in those enjoyable activities, things that brought you a little bit of joy, a lot of joy, things that, have, that you, you were doing prior um, to COVID-19. Also, that being said, you know, maybe you're learning new enjoyable activities um, that you might never had thought of before, or you're going back to some enjoyable activities that now you feel, oh, wow, I have a little bit more time on my hands right now. So routine, trying to establish that routine that you had prior, um, because like we know, when we are stressed, you know, our body starts to present its bill. Um, and usually how that does is sleep, um, our routine, our concentration, our mood. So it's trying to get a routine in place to really, really um, emphasize the importance of taking care of ourselves emotionally, physically, mentally. Helping others is my fifth tip. And the reason that I, I really wanted to touch on this is What's really neat is this is a way that we are able to remain socially connected, but I've also noticed that this is a way that helps us reduce um, our anxiety, our worries as well. And we can do this from our couch. <laughs> so um, helping others helps us. Asking friends, family members, neighbors, if they need anything, simply checking in regularly by phone, text, video can make a big difference. So a, a lot of studies indicate that the very act of giving back to our community boosts our feelings of happiness, health, and our sense of well-being. So it really does lower our stress. So just the sheer fact of checking in on someone and saying, you know, how's it going? How, how has today been? You know, are you okay? Do you need anything? That makes us feel like, you know, oh, that, you know, I have that purpose. I want to be there. I want to feel that support from others, but also I'm providing that support. So that's a, it goes a long way to making us feel like we are all in this together because we truly are, right? Numbers, oh, ah, my, my clicker was a little too happy. Take really good care of yourself, both physically, uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, um, and that was my sixth tip. And you know, it's so important. Again, you know, one day, uh, you know, I love this quote. Um, it really just talks about what I was speaking to earlier. In you know, we can pull from our past experiences when you know instances where we really have overcome hardship. We have overcome you know, major stressors in our lives. And we can utilize, you know, what are some of those strategies that we were able to utilize or pull from to get us through those difficult times? You know, we're strong, resilient human beings. And, you know, even statements every day, you know, affirming to yourself, I can get through this, I will get through this. And when we're all able to um, you know, pull through this together, you know, we feel that as well. So we really, really have to take good care of ourselves. Um, and you 
are your world's expert. You have to make, you have to kind of get to know yourself, get to know what's going on right now. And if you're noticing that sleep's been a big issue, you know, make it, make a really good plan on, you know, what can I do to, you know, get my sleep back to being better, you know, looking up sleep schedule. Um, maybe you've noticed that you're a very active individual and now being indoors, it's hard uh, to get that activity. Uh, being creative and focusing in on, you know, what makes me feel what better and lowers that stress is my physical activity. Well, then, you know, map out a plan and figure out how can you increase that physical activity while in your home, um, in apartment, uh, and, and think of it that way. So we really have to pull from our intrinsic resiliency and get, get this, we all have it, you know. Um, we are our own world's expert and, you know, get to know yourself, get to know when your body, your brain, your mind's telling you, you know, I'm stressed. You know, sometimes all we need to do is just validate it and it's okay and be kind to ourselves because this really is a really hard time for all of us. So I won't spend too much on this, but uh, we know that we have to take care of our body as well, right? Uh, you know, how much sleep are you getting every night? You know, have you noticed a change? Uh, do you notice when you're not getting enough sleep, how are you feeling during the day? You know, how does your body, how does your mind tell you? You know, uh, foods that we can, you know, get to when that could help us when we are feeling stressed. You know, we need to fuel our body appropriately um, and activity. You know, we need to really participate in 20 to 30 minutes of movement and notice how I say movement because it does not matter if you are sitting you're standing um, individuals with mobility issues something just as simple as you know just stretching your arms out grabbing two cans lifting them up over your head right um, maybe when you're watching a favorite show uh, doing lunges or yoga Right? There's so many amazing free videos on YouTube. Um, just, you know, five minute yoga, 30 minutes. It does not matter what you're doing, but our bodies crave movement. So just getting our bodies movement, uh, moving, it helps stabilize mood. It improves our sleep. Um, and it also, you know, reduces that stress that we feel as well. I liked this. This is from Mindfulness Studies. I posted it. I really liked the picture. And these are just grounding tips for changing times. I thought it was a really nice picture of some added ways that we can, um, you know, practice some, some of these coping strategies. So writing how we feel. Like I said, validating what you're feeling. Uh, keeping a daily journal. Maybe even tips for um, any youth out there listening, uh, parents, you know, every day, um, you know, child, youth, adult, any of us, just, you know, today, this is what I felt. And you might notice that you're, you're feeling just a whole wave of emotions. And, you know, it's normal. It, it, you know, don't question, oh, is it okay to feel this way? Is this normal? anything's normal right now. I mean, this is, we're, we're all in uncharted waters, you know, we're all experiencing this uh, collectively together. Uh, practicing gratitude definitely helps as well. I'm going to talk about how we can breathe, um, utilize meditation, mindfulness, um, and let's talk about that media again. So, Number seven, and I think this one is a really important one that we should address. And I know I already talked about, you know, 
really seeking information from those trusted websites and sources. But number seven is something completely on its own, you know, uh, to, to lower those feelings of stress and worry and fear and anxiety, you know, start trying to cut back on the amount of time that you're spending on social media um, and the news, specifically for anything COVID-19 related. Um, mindfully set time to unplug, disconnect for a while um, from all social media outlets. And, you know, sometimes that, that we really need to schedule that time in to make sure it happens. I'll be honest with you, it's hard not to constantly be scrolling through Twitter, um, any news outlets trying to think, okay, what's going on? What's going on in the world around us? And, you know, sometimes I call that my vicious cycle. I'm getting into that what if what if worrying thinking, thinking. So a way to do that is to mindfully schedule time where you say, you know what, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., I'm not going to go on uh, social media and you know look up anything that's going on right now in the news. Um, going out for a walk or you know, when you're in your backyard or just outside uh, socially, um, socializing with maybe neighbors at the, uh, you know, adhering to the government standards of socially distancing and physical distance, um, you know, maybe don't go outside with that phone. Don't even hang on to that phone. Uh, do, something in, do something fun and healthy for yourself instead. Uh, reading a book, you know, uh, working on a project, art, listening to music, um, the list goes on and on. So limit checking uh, in on that latest news um, and that, in, that picture of the individual in her, um, her bedroom late at night. I'll be honest, you know, it's hard not to do that sometimes. I know the first week uh, I... I was waking up three, four in the morning, and that was because my brain was just going to, oh no, is anything else pressing on the news? You know, so we have to mindfully try to unplug ourselves and identify that that's causing an increase in our stress and our anxiety and our fear. Number seven, number seven or eight, now I've lost track. <laughs> um, a sense of humor is a, a really amazing line of defense when it comes to coping with stress. Uh, so what, what I mean by that is, you know, try throughout the day to have little instances where, you know, you can have a little chuckle with a friend or laugh with your children, or maybe you're just watching an Ellen show, uh, you know, or YouTubing something that can make you laugh because, you know, laughter is really important. It really does elevate and boost our feelings of wellness. It lowers our stress as well. And it really can help us um, when it comes to coping with stress as well. And this is going back to, you know, when we start getting into you know, those worrying thoughts or those unhelpful think thoughts that cause us to increase that stress and worry. Um, you know, again, I feel like I'm a broken record. I keep saying this, but call those feelings out for what they are and seek, to, seek support to help you understand and process them. So, you know, if, you, if you're finding that you're worrying constantly about a certain what if, you know, if you can't fully process it and understand it, you know, call up a friend, uh, you know, and I'm going to go through a list of resources that um, can help as well to seek support for maybe those certain questions or certain what if answers that you're looking for. But sometimes when we're, al we're able to call that feeling out, and we're able to talk to someone else about it, um, we're able to get to a place where, ah, oh, that was good. I needed to talk that out. When we're not able to talk that out or call those feelings out, what starts to happen is we notice that it, it kind of stays in our brain and we kind of keep going back to those worrying thoughts. So that's just another little tool or tip. This one's hard. When I put it out there, I'm like, oh, 
I have to take this advice as well. Um, we had, you know, try your very best to um, don't stress about stressing out, you know. <laughs> um, so, and what I really mean by this is, you know, it's okay that you're you're feeling stressed. Validate that, um, and focus on, you know, having a plan. You know, uh, what are those strategies that you can add into your toolbox? What are things that you're doing that are reducing those feelings of stress? Uh, because when we're able to reduce, when we're able to focus on things that, you know, we're doing and we currently have in place, that that really lowers that feeling of stress, and we find that we're not able, we're we're not stressing about stressing out. Amidst all the stress and the worry, um, you know, a great outlet is to focus on, you know, what you value instead of what we fear. Um, so sometimes when we are stressed and anxious, um, anxiety, a lot of those fears is in the future, right? It's either things that we're worrying about of what it's going to happen or things of, um, that happen in the past. And when we're able to focus on maybe just today or maybe things that are meaningful right here in this moment right now, um, that helps lower our stress and our worries and our anxiety because we're able to focus on something that we value, something that we find that, you know, I got this, you know, I mean, I feel that I have more control of this right now. Um, so a, a good example, you know, is building up those social connections, um, maybe more time on, you know, being able to practice meditation, mindfulness, um, any individuals that, um, you know, spiritual, uh, religious beliefs, it doesn't matter anything you value, uh, focus on those things that are meaningful to you. And that can reduce um, that stress and that worry on focusing on things that we're fearful of right now. Don't expect stability. <laughs> um, and, you know, and this really just goes with right now, you know, we're all adjusting to a new normal. And, and that really is changing by the hour, by the day, by the week. Um, so don't expect yourself to have it all figured out. Um, you know, just plan day by day, you know. And if planning day by day, feels overwhelming and stressful, it's okay. You know, you can plan it into chunks and, you know, just focus on this is what I'm doing this morning. This is what I'm going to do this afternoon. This is maybe what I, my plan is for the evening. And, you know, the time and energy, energy we spend on thinking about how poor a situation is sometimes is that detriment, right? Because it causes us to focus on the good old days or, you know, focus on those fears instead of pulling from that intrinsic resiliency that we have and getting us to learn, you know, problem solve and how can we adapt to our current situation right now. Huh, well, I got my numbers wrong. So now I put number eight, mindfulness. So <laughs> I got to fix those numbers. So mindfulness. Um, for those of you that don't know what mindfulness is, mindfulness really just means maintaining a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, bodily sensations, and surrounding environment in a non-judgmental way. Um, we can say that right now, we let's say we're all practicing mindfulness together. How can we do that? Well, let's just say we all decide to take it big deep breath. So for a moment, let's all take a deep breath in. And as you're taking that breath, right? What are you paying attention to? Right? You're feeling that breath. You might be holding holding that breath. And then as you exhale and you release that breath, what are you feeling? Right? So however you are practicing that mindfulness, um, you know, it doesn't have to be this big thing. I'll be honest with you. 
<laughs> the first couple times that I practiced, I would tell colleagues, I can't pay attention. My mind started to, you know, wander here or wander there. That's okay. You know, um, even just taking a deep breath in, holding it, taking a deep breath out. That's us being right here in this moment together. So mindfulness can really help us. Uh, it can help reduce uh, distressing thoughts, feelings, uh, makes us feel a little calmer for individuals that start to incorporate mindfulness in their day to day. Um, a lot of studies are coming out that it really does lower uh, feelings of stress. It elevates mood. It, uh, it helps us focus in. And uh, they've also indicated that it really is a great tool for making us feel that we are calmer and thinking more clearly to make good decisions. So I think the next slide that I'm going to show you if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong, so fingers crossed I'm correct. It's called Take Five. It's honestly how I started practicing mindfulness. And um, I really encourage you to try it with me uh, as we see the video. Hopefully it's not too, too choppy, but um, I will send everyone an email with the links um, as it is a great video. I highly encourage any, um, anyone with children out there you know, do it with your child. It's a really great uh, mindfulness exercise. Oh, and I was wrong. It totally was not the next slide. <laughs> so this slide really just um, goes to my uh, take five video that I'm about to show you and I'll talk about grounding. Hey everyone, Corey Mascara here. Uh, people are always asking me, Hey everyone, Corey Mascara here. Uh, people are always asking me for, you know, what is a, a simple strategy that I can utilize throughout the day, you know, in addition to my formal meditation practice, just to reground myself, recenter myself. And uh, one thing I learned recently that I've found people seem to love is this strategy called Take Five, which you can do if you only have 30 seconds. So I just want to share it with you here. It's really simple. I say we, we do it together. Take out your left hand. And just place it in front of you like this. And I want you to take your right pointer finger and place it right in the palm of your hand, right around your wrist. Now what we're going to do is slide the pointer finger up the thumb. And as we do, take an inhale through the nose. And then slide back down with an exhale. Slide up the pointer finger, inhale. And then back down, exhale through the mouth. Slide up the middle finger, inhale. Back down, exhale. Ring finger, inhale. Back down. And then pinky finger. And back down. All right, so let's take five. If you were feeling really ambitious and you had a ton of time on your hands, you could do take 10 and you do it on the other side as well. You know, this is a simple strategy that you can utilize really at any point throughout the day when you first wake up, while you're at work, while you're in the bathroom, before you go to bed, it really doesn't take that much longer than 30 seconds. And there, there's something about the tactile nature of this, of sliding the finger up, feeling the sensations of the hand, and then syncing that with the breath that really does seem to engage the parasympathetic nervous system and help settle us in. So, you know, I learned this, uh, first in the, like the context of kids and then we started using it with uh, adults and then I was like am I going to be bold enough to, to bring this into corporate settings and tell uh, executives to pet their fingers every time they're stressed out and I have and even they seem to love it so of all the things that I've been teaching this has been one of the most popular things that people come back and say like you know all that other mindfulness stuff is good but that take five thing really into that so does it hold all the mysteries of mindfulness no, but it is a mindfulness technique and it, it is one way that we can ground ourselves back in the present moment when we find ourselves ruminating, lost in thought, caught up in the future in the past. You can do this. 30 seconds, reground yourself back in the present and then start from there. So try it out, introduce it to your kids, introduce it to your friends. It's a very simple strategy uh, that seems to be quite effective. All right. I hope that worked. I hope the video wasn't too choppy. Um, like I said, I will definitely uh, add the link 
it's one of my favorites and it's just a way that, you know, when I do find myself worrying, it's just checking in with yourself, you know, and, and giving yourself that nice deep breath in and deep breath out. Um, so again, I just put it, uh, another slide, uh, again, observing your breathing, you know, uh, exercising, uh, deep breathing exercises can help uh, when you're dealing in a crisis, experiencing that increase of stress, difficulties. Um, and I, I want to go back to that grounding slide that you saw. Sometimes I find that when we're able to ground ourselves to um, you know, any of utilizing any of our five senses, it really does help. Um, so for instance, when you're doing the take five, the reason it is my favorite is because, you know, that tactile, and I always usually look at my hands, so I'm, you know, really focused on that, and then feeling that breath. So puzzles, coloring, knitting, crocheting, um, exercising, body movements, um, mindful eating, uh, you know, practicing eating an orange, you know, smelling an orange, opening it, feeling what it tastes, anything um, you're doing right now, you can incorporate little bits of mindfulness. And uh, so number nine, or number 20, <laughs> because my numbers were all wrong. Um, my, uh, my other tip is, you know, really seek extra help or support when you need it. Um, so if you're noticing that your symptoms of anxiety um, in association with COVID-19 or otherwise, right? So if you're someone, you know, that you have, um, you know, experienced anxiety, uh, panic attacks, you know, anything um, prior to COVID-19. And with this, now you're noticing that the symptoms are increasing, you know, if anything is causing you significant distress, um, or if it's interfering with your ability to function, you know, I really, really encourage everyone out there to reach out for formal mental health supports from a recognized agency such as CMHA. Um, or, you know, for those of you listening in um, anywhere, maybe in Canada, I have no idea, or uh, regardless, I'm going to go through um, some resources because it's really important to build up, you know, those resources and know when to reach out and how to get connected and increase those supports if you need it. So here in Windsor, Essex County, um, we have our Crisis and Mental Wellness Center. Really important to encourage everyone um, right now, uh, even though the walk-in uh, is currently open, everyone at the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center is really encouraging that you call prior uh, first. So all phones, um, every single phone is answered first by a crisis worker. Um, so let's say that you just need help. Maybe you listened to this webinar and you thought, you know, yeah, my anxiety is starting to get really unmanageable. I could really use some extra help or I need someone to talk to, or maybe I could utilize services from CMHA. Even Maybe you just need a question answered. It doesn't matter one phone number here in Windsor, Essex County, and that's 519-973-4435. It is answered by a crisis worker. You can let them know, yeah, this is not a crisis, but I've noticed this and this and this, and it, I just need support. And so the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center is going to help kind of navigate you know, that mental health system and where are those resources within your community and how do we make the linkages, referrals and that connection. Um, so if someone is looking for services, um, getting connected with CMHA, you'd be calling the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center first and we have our coordinated access team that work from the Crisis and Mental, Mental Wellness Center. So those, the crisis number, it is open 24 hours, so you are calling anytime.
and I highly encourage you know, make that phone call. Um, so they do have walk-in and that is open. Uh, crisis support on site is open. Um, again, seven days a week, but they are encouraged that we call ahead of time first. Um, we posted this uh, infographic uh, uh, right before the weekend. Um, and this was just for anyone out in the community to really know, you know, what are supports in place uh, right now here through CMHA. So if you are in crisis and you need help, um, you know, and you, you need services immediately, we really encourage you call 911 if it, you require medical assistance immediately or you call our crisis, crisis line. Um, you know, you need help, but you're not in crisis. Um, you know, if you have a CMHA worker, you know, please contact them um, or call our reception and they'll be happy to kind of help out and point you in that right direction, direction or visit our website. Um, you know, for individuals that are connected, you know, our, our appointments right now are being done over the phone. Um, and for in individuals, uh, there is an injection clinic um, that's located at the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center, and it is still operating for individuals that are receiving those services. Um, so this is posted on our website. It's posted on Facebook. So please share with anybody that you find that might or could use this type of information as well. Another great resource um, that is free to anyone um, in Ontario is Bounce Back. Now, Bounce Back is a really awesome uh, skill building uh, program. It is, the foundation really is built on cognitive behavioral therapy. It is for anyone out there that is, uh, that's struggling right now with stress, <laughs> stress that's really making things difficult to function. Um, anybody who's struggling with mild to moderate symptoms of anxiety, depression, low mood, it is a free, um, free service. And there's two modalities in which uh, we can get you connected. So you see there is a toll-free 1-800 number, or you can simply call your family physician. Uh, you can let them know that you really want to get connected with the Bounce Back program. Um, so uh, the physician would be you know, filling out a form. It's a very easy form. They would get you, um, they would fax that over to Bounce Back and uh, you would get a call, you would get a phone call, and everything about Bounce Back, the beauty of all this is uh, you'd be doing this in the comfort of your own home. Uh, so there's no face-to-face, -face. everything is via Skype or phone. Um, for those of you that really like um, doing uh, online courses or online classes, um, you could do the workbooks um, via online or they would mail them out to you. Um, so this is an absolutely free program. Um, it is available in, I don't even wanna quote the correct amount of languages, but I'm pretty sure, I think I can confidently say there's definitely more than 54 um, languages that uh, they're able to provide a bounce back in. Um, I do know that if you go on bouncebackontario.ca um, and you're not sure about making that referral or calling your physician just yet, you can actually just log in and start watching uh, their videos to see if that interests you. Um, or you can watch it with your teams, your, it doesn't matter. And uh, those videos, uh, short introduction sections, uh, sessions to uh, bounce back are available in, I believe, seven to eight different languages right now. So that's on bounceback.ca. Another great tool, uh, another great free um, resource for anyone in Ontario is bigwhitewall.ca. Um, I can't say enough positive things about Big White Wall. So what is Big White Wall? Big White Wall is an online uh, peer support mental health hub, I like to say. Um, you know, it does everything. What's amazing about Big White Wall is that it is 
24 hours monitored um, by uh, clin clinicians. Um, so you are safe for individuals accessing the white wall. Uh, we're ensuring that safety for anyone, um, for everyone there. Um, there are online tutorials, there's online courses. Um, what's really lovely about Big White Wall is that you're able to connect, socially connect with perhaps individuals that might be experiencing uh, same stressor that you've been experiencing. Um, individuals, you might join a chat group that you're building peer support with I'm just throwing out examples. Maybe you're an indiv individual that experiences a panic attacks or um, depression. Whatever, it does not matter what it is. Chances are, you know, you can find a peer support group within the big white wall. Um, so how do you register for this? Pretty awesome. You just go on to bigwhitewall.ca and start that registration. Um, I forgot to mention bounce back. Um, anybody over the age of 15 can access and start utilizing bounce back and for big white wall you have to be 16 years of age and wow I'm at the end I think I did better today <laughs> um, usually I go along no yeah okay good 50 minutes uh, last time I said that I would finish and get Q&A and that didn't work so well because I think I finished right on time uh, so right now if anybody would like to unmute um, ask some questions um, I try my I'll try my best to answer if you don't want to unmute um, I can open up uh, the chat I've never done this before, but I think if you just click chat, um, here, I'm just gonna say, hi. oh dear, I don't, know. I don't know what I'm doing. I apologize, everyone. Um, so again, like I mentioned, I am going to send everyone all of these resources um, and I will send everything to um, your email in which you registered. Is there any questions? I'm trying to do a chat. Now I feel like you can't even see. I feel like I stopped my video. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm currently managing stress. Taking a deep breath in, taking a deep breath out. Well, if there is no questions, thank you all for joining us today. And I hope, oh, I do have a question. Yay. I don't think anyone has questions. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us. And um, I hope some of those tips were useful. And uh, we'll be posting more webinars. Uh, so please join in. Thank you.